A few years back, I built this acoustic out of carbon fiber, and while I was pretty happy with how it turned out, there was a similar curiosity that so many of my viewers had. What if it had a wood top? Can I get a good acoustic sound still using the carbon fiber body, but with a wooden top? Now, this kind of defeats the purpose of using carbon fiber to build a guitar, being that the advantage is that it's stable and won't move over time, so we're sort of moving in the wrong direction with this, but I was just as curious as most of you, so let's continue down this path a bit and slap a wood top on one of these bodies and see what it sounds like. Another thing I got a few comments about on the previous carbon fiber guitar is that I should have used two separate pieces to fabricate the body, one for the sides of the guitar and another separate piece for the back. On this one, I used one big sheet of carbon fiber that I then had to cut on the curves in order for it to lay down without folding. So on this one, one piece for the back and a separate for the sides. some mold release still on it. It's also got some issues on it. I didn't get a very good vacuum seal, so it, it didn't suck into the corners real tight like it should have. So I'll have to figure out what to do with areas like this. I think the first thing to do is chop about a half inch off the top just to get rid of all this loose strand. I should mention that there are already guitars on the market that have composite bodies with wood tops, and they can sound great, so I know it's possible, but for me, I think it'll be interesting to see how the sound changes between the two versions of the carbon fiber acoustic that will be virtually the same except for the material of the soundboard. The heel block area on this design isn't ideal, and if I could do it over again, I wouldn't have molded in the heel block insert, and I would have just figured out a different way to attach the heel block. But being that that's the way it is, I glued on a maple backing to the heel area, as well as a top brace using some scrap wood I had. I'd like for this heel block to be adjustable at least a little bit in case I have to change the neck angle. So I think what I'm going to do is install these threaded inserts into the block and then I can take these bolts and secure the heel block on from the inside, which should give me the adjustability I'm looking for. I'd like to take a moment here and thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for around two years now and it's something I've kept coming back to because the classes are engaging and have helped me improve my work and my personal life. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes on everything for anyone who loves learning. I recently finished a class on audio mixing by King Arthur where I learned about composing a quality audio track and how to mix it so that it sounds professional. I've always found audio mixing to be one of the more difficult tasks when recording guitar, and now when I record my guitar demos, I have more knowledge on how to achieve the best sounding final product. The first thousand of my viewers to sign up using my code BURLSART or my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. I built this little clamp structure out of some particle board and threaded metal rods so that I can clamp the soundboard bracing while gluing them on. It's kind of an awkward and delicate operation, and since all the stuff I'm gluing on needs to be clamped in the middle of the soundboard, normal C-clamps won't work. I'm just using some small wooden dowels with rubber end caps on them to apply downward pressure onto the braces, and it ended up working pretty well.
Here I'm just marking where the X braces will contact the kerfing so that I can inlay them into the kerfing. For gluing the neck to the heel block, I ended up using epoxy resin just because the neck I had wasn't a perfect fit on the dovetail of the heel block. So the epoxy will fill in any potential gaps better than wood glue does. I debated whether to use epoxy or wood glue for gluing on the top. And I ended up using wood glue because it's easier to apply and through some testing I realized that it actually bonds pretty well to carbon fiber which I was surprised about. Then I used my little clamping system to press down the soundboard while gluing it on and then once it dried I took it out and cut off the excess around the body. I had a little bit of an issue here with getting the top of the neck to align perfectly with the top of the soundboard. It's difficult to tell here, but the neck is about a millimeter lower than the soundboard, which doesn't sound like much, but it needs to be perfectly level with the soundboard so that the fretboard can lay down correctly. So what I ended up doing was routing out the soundboard, effectively inlaying the fretboard extension into the soundboard so that it lines up correctly. Little test fit just to make sure the fretboard lines up correctly. That looks pretty good. Now that I had that squared away, it was on to finishing the neck, doing some fret work, and getting the bridge glued on. Okay, got it strung up. Uh, we'll see what it sounds like a little bit later, but for now I just want to check the string action and make sure the neck angle looks good. I did have to add a little shim in the neck block to get the neck angle where I wanted, so I'm going to remove this and get a more permanent shim in place now that I know how big it needs to be. I've also got to do something about these edges. I can't just leave it looking like this. What I decided to do is glue on the fretboard to the body, which ultimately makes the neck permanently attached to the body. And since the neck was basically permanent at this point, I decided to just fill in those ugly edges with a filler. With the filler on, I no longer can adjust the neck angle via the bolts on the inside. But since I had already made the necessary adjustments to the heel block, this shouldn't matter going forward. I applied a few coats of amber shellac mainly to give the soundboard a little color and then I epoxied on a carbon fiber sheet to the headstock, basically a carbon fiber veneer. Sprayed on a few coats of lacquer on the entire guitar and then I installed a small acoustic pickup system that mounts under the bridge along with the rest of the hardware.
So obviously version one of the carbon fiber guitar has a carbon fiber top and just by tapping on it you can hear a pretty big difference in how they resonate. Version 2 has an acoustic pickup system in it, so it does have the option to get plugged into the amp if I want to. The first one doesn't have any fret markers, this one does, it has those turquoise dots that I put in. The carbon fiber layup was a bit different between the two, like I mentioned earlier. This one just used one big sheet, whereas on this one, I used a separate strip of carbon fiber to fabricate the sides, which I think looks a lot better. And lastly, on version 2, I cleaned up the heel block area a bit compared to version 1 where I just left it as is. Those are pretty much the major aesthetic and structural differences. As for the differences in sound or which one sounds better, I'll leave that for you to decide. Real quick before we get to the sound test, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can at Burl's Art. 